there, welcome back to Lima Bean Living. In today's video, we are party prepping for my aunt's birthday party. I offered to host her party at my house, and I thought I would do kind of like a Halloween theme and kind of combine the two. So we're doing a Halloween birthday party themed party. <laughs> and we're starting off by just kind of putting some Halloween decorations out. We did this kind of a couple weeks before the party just because it was going to be October anyways. And I wanted to show you guys what we have. These little cans that are painted my mom gave us. She had these at her house and had some extras and so she thought we would enjoy them. You could also fill them with flowers. We just kind of left them as is. Then I'm putting out this little skeleton that we've had since we lived in Texas. We got it at Target, I believe. And they're just like all separate little stakes that you put in the ground. And I don't know, we thought it was funny. Juan really likes it. So that little skeleton, I don't know, we, we don't have a name for him. Maybe you guys can give your ideas in the comments, but he is our main Halloween decoration in addition to a few other little things and some Halloween Christmas lights as well, which Juan put up very nicely on the front of our house. Okay, next we're decorating the inside of our house. I got these little like ghost witches things from Dollar Tree a couple years ago, and I think that they still sell them. And then we also got these witches hats that I got also from Dollar Tree. And what I'm doing is I'm just attaching a string to a button, and we're gonna be threading this through the hat so that the button rests on the inside of the hat, and gonna be hanging these above our island where we hope to eventually get pendant lights, but in the meantime, decorations will work just fine and I like this technique just because if I just had tied a string I think the knot probably would have like come through the hole that I had to poke and the button just kind of makes sure that like you know it's not going to be falling off anytime soon. I really like also that like you can't really see the string so it just looks like they're floating above the island. That was one of my favorite little decorations. If you guys watched my frozen party prep, I hung snowflakes. So I kind of hope to continue this until we eventually get lights and maybe I'll hang other decorations somewhere else. But moving on, I've seen a lot of you know people out there hang little bats around their house. And instead of buying my own, I figured I'd use the supplies that I had. So I only had one sheet of black uh, like cardstock, and so I had to use brown. But I think that this worked out. It kind of gave the look kind of more variety. So I cut out a bunch of bats, and unfortunately, the Cricut like didn't cut all the way through the cardstock, and it made it really hard to weed out the parts that weren't supposed to be there. But I didn't stress over it because our walls are like the kind of the same kind of white as the paper that is exposed. I was just like, you know what? No one's going to be studying these like in detail in person. So as you can see, I'm not really getting all the paper off as I'm weeding, but you really can't tell when you're looking at these bats on my wall. So it's really not a big deal. But anyways, I cut out a bunch of bats and then we're going to be attaching them to our little like hallway wall as you walk in like through the front door. And the way that I did this was in order to like not screw up our paint, I'm using painter's tape and then some of these like little round stickers that you often use for like a balloon arch. So I'm attaching the little round stickers to the bats first and then putting like the piece of blue painter's tape on top of it with the sticky side up so that I can then attach this to the wall and nothing's going to be ruined. Now I could have just used the, you know, blue painter's tape and made it like a, a loop, you know, where you fold it on itself, but I didn't want these bats to like maybe be sticking off too much. Or sometimes when you do that loop technique, they fall off. So I really just wanted to avoid all of that and have them kind of be more flush with the wall. And I bent out the wings a little bit too, to kind of give it a little bit more dimension. Now that your things are gone. 
Next, we're just adding some little, very minimal decorations to the bathroom. I had some of these pumpkins from the Dollar Tree and the Hello Fall signs from the Dollar Tree. As you guys know, I love me some Dollar Tree. I'm not loving the price hike, but you know, what can you do? Uh, anyways, so one thing that I do really want to continue is doing my like chalk pen art in the bathroom and on our sliding glass door. So I will be adding some just little decorations in the bathroom. I thought a spider web would be cute, some pumpkins, and then a little tombstone. Although I didn't want it to get like too morbid since we're doing a birthday party, but I thought that, you know, this looked kind of cute in the bathroom. So for the sliding glass door, I thought I would do a similar decoration with the little spider web up in the corner, but I wanted to do like ghosts flying on through the door and like having them just kind of float by, I guess. And I had these little, I don't know what they're really called. They're like wire decorations. You'll see them in a bit, but that's how I got the inspiration of how to draw these ghosts. There's so many different ways you can draw ghosts, but I really liked how cute these ones looked. So I just did a variety and then Aubrey wanted to help me and then she kind of decided not to help me, but I used her height as a reference and I drew like a life-size mummy with a little opening for the eye holes. And my idea behind this was that you could have like the kids stand on one side of the door and then you could take a picture and like you could see their little eyes popping through. We'll see Aubrey take a picture or cameo little moment in a second. But I really like just like the idea of kind of using the door as like a photo op as well. So later that evening, I wasn't totally feeling how I did the mummy. I I know that it, you know, one doesn't look realistic anyways, but I kind of felt like it looked too blobby. So I kind of erased some arms or hands and, you know, just kind of modified it a little bit. And then on my other door, I decided just to draw some more ghosts. And then I drew like a little Frankenstein photo op character as well as like a little cat. And I really like the way that they all turned out. So we're moving on to the glass board now. I wanted to document Aubrey's little decorations. She drew our family, um, if you could tell, those are our family members. And then she stuck on a bunch of little pieces of the confetti things from the wire decorations I told you about. Um, she was decorating, so I had to at least document that before I erased it all. And then since we're doing a Halloween birthday party, I thought it would be cute to say happy booth day. I don't know, I've never seen this done before. I don't know if it's you know worth copying or not, but I altered the boo so many times because I just wasn't happy with like how it looked. But the final product, you know, was good enough for me. It took me a little while to get there, but you know, I was um, satisfied with how it turned out. Oh, <laughs> oh,
Okay, so moving on, we're gonna be doing another DIY uh, willow table skirt using Dollar Tree table covers, so the plastic ones. And so the first thing that I'm doing is just covering our six foot table with just a table cover. And along the edges of the table, I'm putting some blue tape because this is where we're gonna be gluing our like spirally table cover cutouts. <laughs> So to make this, if you guys didn't catch my frozen party, I did one for this too, um, or if you just forgot how I made them in that last video. So we're gonna take our table covers out of the plastic wrapper and not unfold it all the way, just kind of unfold it like the first way lengthwise, and we're gonna cut a bunch of squares. Next, we are going to trim around the like perimeter of the square, just kind of maybe making like a squircle, a square circle. And then once you have this, we're gonna create a spiral from the outside all the way to the center of this squircle table cover. And I would suggest making this about one and a half to two inches thick in your spiral. Anything like smaller in thickness will create a super long spirally, you know, table decoration thing. And anything thicker might just kind of either look weird or it might end up being too short. So I found that one and a half to two inches thick is kind of the, the area that you should shoot for. So this is what the table cover looks like when it's totally prepared. I'm gonna do this again three more times. I used a total of four table covers to create all the ruffles and then a fifth one to cover the actual table. And for this party, I figured orange and black would be appropriate colors for this table decoration. Uh, but for my like daughter's frozen party, we did white and blue. You could do like a rainbow one, you could do pink and red, but really the options are endless for this. So once you have all of the spirals cut out, you want to separate each strand that doing the cuts created. And we're going to be gluing these to the tape that we taped around our table perimeter. And what I did was because I did about two inch thick strands, they weren't quite long enough for me to fold it in the middle and glue the middle to the tape. I did offset it a little bit so that the little willowy strands would almost reach the floor, at least one side, and then the other side ended up a little bit taller off the ground. But you really can't tell, so I really like how it turned out. It kind of gave it like a layered effect. And we're just gonna glue these all the way around the table like I said, I did four table covers for these decorations and it almost finished off the three sides of the table that were exposed. At the very end, I just kind of taped on the scraps of the table covers that were left over. But as you guys can see, the finished product looks really nice. I really like how it turned out. And then I got moving on to our little balloon arch that I did with some Dollar Tree balloons. So my idea behind this balloon arch was trying to copy like a candy corn. So it actually made assembling the balloon arch really easy for me because I could just blow up all the same color, 
get the you know colors grouped together and then assembled the balloon arch very quickly doing the chunky kind of balloon arches like colored colorful chunks all over is really easy rather than like buying a pack from amazon with like tons of different sizes and colors and then trying to make it look nice and having it be like assorted so this was a lot quicker to set up but i can't say that i really like how it ended up my idea in my head i thought was good but the final results i kind of don't think it totally gave a candy corn vibe to my guests my mom suggested actually doing like had i done yellow on both ends then orange and then white at the very top it might have resembled a candy corn a little bit better but moving on anyways we are outside it's like i think the day before the party and i'm using those little wire decoration things that i'm that i talked previously about and i got these from the dollar tree a couple years ago i made like a little wreath with what with them and these were just kind of what was left over they had skulls bats ghosts spiders and pumpkins and i just kind of like did them around the post on our patio cover so normally for like Aubrey's parties, I try to have lots of activities planned or things like that. And here I just wanted to keep it simple. I picked up two little crafts from the Dollar Tree. Um, I've actually had these on hand for like a while. I got them a while ago. So hopefully the stores still have them if you are doing a last minute party. But they were just cute little finger puppets and then like making little foam Halloween owls. And then I picked up some of these objects for you could do like prizes. This is my prize section because we're going to be playing just one game for this party. Or these would make really cute uh, little like goodie bags or gift bags um, or gift coffins, I guess. <laughs> but they're these little coffins. They came in a two pack and I'm filling them with just some candy for like prizes for the game that we're going to play. And then Dollar Tree also was selling these cute book boxes. And I just picked up one, but they had a couple different like varieties of books. You could use them as decoration around your house, but I thought it would make a cute little gift basket as well. So here I'm just kind of preparing an activity and a game for the, you know, actual party. And I'm using some little like autumn craft paper that my mom had given me a couple years ago. And I just never really figured out how I was going to use it. But I thought what would be really cute is to make like a memory game. I know that Aubrey and some of her cousins are kind of at that age where you like playing like the memory games, flipping over the cards and seeing if you can match, you know, the different styles of cards. And so I just cut up the craft paper into like little three inch squares. And then because I didn't want you to see like the back like from the back side, you, I didn't want you to see the pattern. I cut up some other cardstock and glued those together and then laminated them because, you know, I, I like my laminator. I like to use it whenever I can because I'm extra like that. But anyways, I laminated the pieces. Plus, I, can, I guess I need to give myself a break. This is going to be long lasting. We can use these again in the future. But anyways, <laughs> since these are going to last us a while, I laminated these, cut off the excess lamination, and made the little memory game. And then with the remaining little squares, I decided to make like a tic-tac-toe board. And I placed these squares as like, you know, instead of drawing the lines of tic-tac-toe, these squares kind of make the tic-tac-toe game itself. And we're going to be playing tic-tac-toe, but with candy corn and candy pumpkins. So the game that we did was like doing a flip cup, um, two teams 
if in order to place your pumpkin or your candy corn on the tic-tac-toe board, you have to flip a cup with red water inside, like blood, until it stands up on its own, and then you can place your piece. And so we just had a fun little game like that, and people won their candy prizes. And overall, I think it was a pretty good game for the age range that we have at our house. Okay, so moving on to the food. I didn't have a lot of Halloween inspired like food items, but I was in charge of like mainly the desserts. And then I also wanted to make these little mummy pigs in a blanket. So we're just, you know, getting the little smokies and some crescent roll dough. And then instead of wrapping the entire smoky in the crescent roll, we're gonna be cutting little strips and then wrapping it around to kind of resemble a mummy. Now, were these perfect? No. Did they have to be? No. And did they taste delicious? Yes. So that is really all that matters. I like the look of like the thinner strand ones, but then you don't really get that much of the actual dough. So you can give or take on how you how you want it to look versus how you want it to taste if you like more of the little smoky or less but uh, that was just a really simple way to incorporate the Halloween theme into one of our snacks. Moving on to another snack but more of a treat style we are going to be making some meringue ghosts. I did a test run a while ago shared it on my Instagram and I did like a job of the hut or like a Pac-Man style ghost. And I'm doing some math here because the recipe that I got online, um, it, I didn't have the exact number of grams of egg whites. So thankfully math is my strong suit. I will put the recipe down below in the description box and like how I figured out how much exactly I should use down there. But after you get your sugar and your egg whites together, we're gonna heat them over a double boiler until they reach either 50 degrees Celsius or about 122 degrees Fahrenheit. And this, I guess, is like the Swiss meringue method. And then we are going to beat these until there's like a stiff-like soft peak. <laughs> I can't really tell based on the recipe that I got. It's, it's, it's pretty stiff. I mixed in about a teaspoon of vanilla just to kind of give it some extra flavoring. You could do lemon juice or, you know, some other flavoring. And then we're going to be piping on these little ghosts and using sprinkles as the eyes and mouth. And I'm doing two different styles. Um, I'm also using chocolate chips in some of them because I really wanted like a nice chocolatey center to go with the subtly sweet meringue. So as you can see, the first two rows of ghosts that I did were pretty much just a meringue. And then the second two rows, I'm putting like four chocolate chips in the center. And I wanted there to be like a chocolatey surprise. And then we're gonna be doing my like Pac-Man style ghost. I'm doing both versions because my family who saw my test run, they kind of were split on which style they liked the best. So I was just like, you know what? I'm just gonna do both again. And so these ones are a little bit easier to pipe out. You can kind of make them, you know, how, whatever design you want because they are flat. And then I just did three little chocolate chips for the eyes and mouth of the ghost. And then, like I said, for the, what I'm calling the job of the hut style ghost, I'm just shoving in little like brown sprinkles for the eyes and then the mouth. This step is pretty time consuming but I do think it gives it like that extra touch 
that just makes it all the more special because if it was just like a white blob, I don't think it would be super obvious that it's a ghost. And so the sprinkles just, you know, very clearly define that this is a ghost and the little tail makes it so that it doesn't look like a melting snowman. <laughs> And then after all the sprinkles are in, I went back with a like finer tipped piping bag and just piped on some little hands for the ghosts as well. I really do like meringue like cookies um, when they're done right and unfortunately these taller ones I don't think I baked them as long as they needed to be because they were kind of more chewy than I was hoping for. The flat cookies I think ended up being perfect and they were completely dried out because you bake them in a very low temperature. I think I did about 175 degrees Fahrenheit for about two hours and then I turned off the oven just let it continue to sit in there. So the flat ones, because they're, you know, they weren't super thick, they dried out completely, but the taller ones I think just needed a little bit more time in the oven. Moving on, in a previous video, I prepared the cake and frosting for the birthday cake I'm going to be assembling in this video, and I actually froze them. So here I'm, you know, I defrosted the buttercream and I'm just beating it up to kind of make it more light and fluffy again after having, you know, been frozen and defrosted and just kind of compacted in its little container. And then while that is fluffing up, I'm making a ganache for like the center of the layers of cake and frosting. And um, this is just, I did about 300 grams of chocolate chips and 200 grams of heavy whipping cream. And then you just melt it in the microwave. And um, if you want it to be like a thicker consistency, just add some more chocolate chips. But it ends up being, in, in my case, it turned out to be like a really fudgy center. And so I really like how it tastes with this combination of flavors. And then we are going to be assembling the cake. I prepared six cake layers, but because of the ganache filling and the frosting itself, a sixth layer would have been way too tall. And so I ended up only using five of the layers. And then I, with that extra layer of cake and the remaining frosting and ganache, I ended up just assembling a separate layer and giving this to my aunt for her to take home and enjoy at her own pace following her birthday party. Do you want to be out there? You don't need to be Prince Charming to me I just need this to be real I don't need no fairy tale You don't need a kill Dragon for me So you might notice that I like remove the cake and then I bring it back. I'm actually putting it in the freezer for a few minutes between each layer to make sure that um, as I'm putting on like the new layer of cake, it doesn't squeeze out the ganache and that the buttercream can kind of just like firm up a little bit better. And then once the crumb coat was done, which is pretty much just the fine layer of frosting that goes around the cake. I used the rest of the frosting to do the final coat of around the cake. And I'm really happy with how it turned out, like just the smoothness of it all. Um, it's so interesting to see the how different the frosting looks with different lighting. Here it looks really black, before it looked kind of gray. Overall, I think it turned out pretty cute. So uh, I wish it was a little bit darker black, but like I said, it turned out fine. And then when I made the frosting in a previous video, I did set aside some of the basic vanilla before I added the cocoa powder so that I could eventually pipe on these little ghosts. So I just did like a blob of frosting and then smeared it out to make it look like it was a flying ghost. 
and used little sprinkles again for just some eyes in this case. I didn't want to put a mouth because I don't know, it, these ghosts were a little bit bigger and I think when I, I think I tried it and it just looked weird. So I just did some eyes and then in some of the extra little space, I just did little smaller ghosts and I didn't put any sprinkles. So like it was their backside or whatever, just to kind of fill it in. And I topped the cake off with four little ghosts flying in a little circle. So I'm really happy with how this cake turned out. Not only does it look cute and obviously fit the theme, but even when it was cut, it looked pretty and it tasted delicious. Everyone really loved the cake and we did have leftovers. So we ended up cutting them up and freezing some slices and I'm actually enjoying one tonight. Right after I record this voiceover, I'm excited to enjoy that little slice. So anyways, here is the cake. You can see like the nice gooey ganache filling. And I did want to make one more kind of Halloween inspired treat in case people didn't want cake because there's some people who don't like cake, but they do like cinnamon rolls. And so I saw this online where you take your cinnamon rolls and unroll the roll. But in my case, I was making it from scratch. So I just never rolled it up in the first place. I just cut out strips and you want to fill a casserole pan so that it kind of looks like intestines. You can kind of wiggle the, the strips of cinnamon roll dough kind of back and forth. I ended up spacing mine out um, a little bit later so that there was more space for the dough to rise. And then you can dye your frosting red so that when it kind of melts on top of the cinnamon rolls, once they're baked, it looks like intestines. Now, mine was kind of a fail, uh, but I made a lot of frosting because I know my family likes frosting and I think they'd rather me have it not look like intestines and just taste good <laughs> rather than having less frosting. So anyways, that was my attempt at cinnamon bun intestines not really a success, but definitely delicious. I do want to wrap up this video by showing you guys one of my niece's creations. She wanted to carve a candy pumpkin and then she wanted to put like a little candle and make it a jack-o-lantern and I thought it was just super adorable and definitely worth sharing with you guys. Anyways, I'd like to thank you guys for watching today's video. If you guys enjoyed it or want to incorporate any of these ideas for your own Halloween party or Halloween birthday party, let me know down below in the comments. Uh, let me know which one is your favorite too as well. I know I threw out a bunch of different decorations or food ideas your way, so if you have a favorite, let me know. Don't forget to like this video, and if you guys are new here, I would love for you to stick around and subscribe. I have a whole bunch of other party prep videos that you can check out, a whole playlist of them, and tons of other motherhood content. So I would love to have you stick around, and I will catch you guys in the next one. to the end of the video. If you didn't know already, every Monday and Friday you can find motherhood and lifestyle content on this channel. And since us moms have to do it all, that may mean yummy recipes, easy DIYs, mom hacks, cleaning and organization, or just a combo of everything. Please know that you are loved and you are made for greatness, and I will catch you in the next one.